Good morning, beloved brethren. Hallelujah. Praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the righteous branch. He is the Holy One of Israel, the Lord in heaven, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15. He is flesh. We are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. No flesh and blood will inherit the kingdom of God, beloved. And in the scriptures, we see something amazing. But first, let's continue honoring and magnifying our Lord in heaven and, ex and extolling him and lifting him up above everything that's that's um, called God. Or let, lift him up above everything that's called God in the earth, everything that worships itself, everything that exalts itself. Let's lift him above it all. Because in Revelation of Jesus Christ, it says, Thou only art holy, O Lord. Our Lord in heaven is the only Son of Man that's holy, in, and um, he has the glory as the last Adam, as we see in 1 Corinthians 15. This is not the same. <clears throat> no, no, no. This is not the flesh and blood and water that he poured out, that he, that, that veil that was torn, his flesh was torn by the centurions who were doing God's will. They were his tool to to crucify it pleased God to crucify him for our sins it pleased him to wound him for our transgressions to be the chastisement of our peace upon him because we we couldn't do it and because of his righteousness his his um, fulfilling that that duty that he had during his time the first time that he came as a Passover lamb, the Messiah of Isaiah 53 in Psalms 2, the only begotten of the Father, hallelujah, praise the Lord, who is now resurrected and alive. He was dead and he was buried, as the scriptures say, and he resurrected on the third day. Though he was crucified on the cross on the tree, he resurrected, defeated death, took the keys of death and hell. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory because he is the Son of Man, the Lord in heaven, the perfect image and likeness of the Almighty Father. Hallelujah. The fire is not our God a consuming fire. What is God's son our God doing for his son right now in the earth? The Father, our Heavenly Father, is here in the earth with fire. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. God is one. God is one. It's his spirit, his word. Hallelujah. He is the spirit and word as we see in Ephesians 6. Hallelujah. We have the word in us, beloved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to him. And he is burning up the chaff. He is burning up. The, he is burning up everything that is not um, making him uh, reign over them. He reigns over us who believe. Praise his name. Hallelujah. He will will and do of his good pleasure in us, it says in the scriptures. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. And he says that no man, no man will pluck us out of his hand. Beloved, we are not of this world. Beloved, do you understand? This is so good. We are, let's read it. We are passed away with him. Old things have passed away and all things have become new, it says in the scriptures. Old things, we are dead and are and buried with Christ and our life is hid in Christ who is where? The Lord in heaven. Hallelujah. Give him all the praise, honor, and glory. We have a new creature created in him. A new creature created in Christ, in the body of Christ. One body, one faith, one spirit. All glory belongs to him alone. He is a king everlasting. He is the Messiah that was born in Bethlehem, that was prophesied, bearing much fruit. I'm a fruit from the dead. I was dead in my sins and trespasses, and he called me out of that darkness into his marvelous light, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, hallelujah, who did no sin, who is no sin, and in, in my new creation... I'm all new. There's, I'm in his new creation. We it says that we are the righteousness in Christ, because he makes us righteous by his spirit. It's not corruptible. It's of the seed, the word which is incorruptible. Are you understanding this, beloved? I hope you are, because this is by the spirit of the living God that we know this truth. The old man is buried. If you're a believer, dead. Yes, the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations right now, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Isaiah 34, 2. The sword is in the land, the word of God. And what is did Jesus say? He says, think not that I have brought peace to the world. Nay, I tell you, I bring a sword. Beloved, he is not bringing peace to 
sin and death. He is destroying sin and death. Right now in our time, hallelujah, give him all the glory. He is the king after the order and, and the royal priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. A king can can do things. He can pluck the corn. Okay, he could he, the King David went in and plucked the corn. Uh, many king kings can do things that priests it's unlawful for a priest to do, but in, in this new royal king and priest kingdom, he can do things greater. The other thing the Lord wanted me to remind us of is that um, anything that we agree with in the earth, according to the scriptures, as God's woman, his, his uh, new, his city, his new Jerusalem, anything that we agree with in the earth, the father of lights, the father of spirits has to approve of it. And if we had made an agreement with anything here in the earth by wicked men's deceit, their sorceries, all of the things that they have done. This is the good news of the new covenant in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In the new covenant, whatever agreement, the woman now, the devil wants to stop this word, so he tries to make noise and chaos. So just rebuke rebuke him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Make it go in the name of Jesus. It's not just a plane, beloved. The timing, the devil wants to bring in stuff to, to stop the word because in Acts 13, they want to stop the word, but we're not going to let it. Um, so we're above all these things, even though we're here as ambassadors, Jesus sat with sinners, but a holy one of Israel cannot sit with sinners. Okay. Jesus did not judge, but in his judgment in the fire, the word of God, he's judging all things. Okay. But it is, un, um, it says in the scriptures, it's unholy to judge, right? It talks about that. But the word who is the lawgiver, the judge, he judges all things. But when he, it's amazing when you understand the spirit, when the word of God is speaking to you, he is giving you all your understanding. He gives us our understanding. If I'm moving too quickly for you, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm speaking to your spirit. Hallelujah. Your new creature that's created in Christ because Jesus did sit with sinners, but those that are holy, it's unlawful for them to sit, by, sit with sinners. What was sitting with sinners, right? What was sitting with sinners? It was the flesh and blood and body and water of Jesus who was born of Mary, who was of Adam, which according to the scriptures, that old man, that old man, he was there in the darkness with all mankind. A light came from heaven sitting in darkness with us, calling us out of darkness, but he was not darkness. This is so important for saints to understand. He was living by the spirit and the spirit, there's no law in the spirit. There's no law. You're not breaking the law when you're in the spirit, you're in the spirit. You're, you're operating out of love. As we see in first John, he stands in the judgment and he was judging righteously, but he was judging no man because he didn't come to judge. He came to serve them and he served them the, the, the food, the bread. He served them the living waters, the water. He served them the truth, the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. He served. And here's the great, oh gosh, this is the Holy Spirit. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. So when he was here, he was living by his father, everything the father said, everything the spirit said, but he was of the spirit because he was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. He said, I and the Father are one. Beloved, I hope that you really understand this because it's so important. Even though he's at the right hand of the Father, he is the right arm of the Father. This is so important to, to understand. Oh, praise you, Jesus. He is one. Hear, O Israel, that Lord is one. It says in the law that God is one. In the law of Moses, it says this is all the truth because it's good. It's truth. It's good. He is good. Jesus loves you so much. Jesus loves us all so much. So, Let's get this right, beloved. Let's understand with the truth, by the spirit of the truth. The Lord in heaven and the Father, they're one by the spirit. Jesus is made an image and likeness of the Father. The Father gives the word to the Son. The Son gives the word to his angels, which he is the Lord of heavenly host. He is the king everlasting. He is forever going to be shining the light of his Father in the kingdom of the Son that God had made for the Son. Because we worship an invisible God, but and whenever we see him, he's going to be made sight. Hallelujah. Um, I'm getting off track. i got to get back on track. Sorry, God. Um, 
So he is the everlasting royal king and priest, beloved. And um, after the order of Melchizedek, a lot of people are making themselves gods in the earth, even though God said, you're gods because the word of the Lord came unto you. Whenever the prophets spoke, they had the word of the Lord come unto them. But they needed Jesus, the new garments, which God had promised, the new garments to cover us, to give us new, like Adam gave Eve part of his rib. In the same way, his woman is part of his body. And in the resurrection, we will ha see that new creation that God has created in him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All glory to him. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He's walking in our hearts by faith until that sight comes. And when he is seen, when, when the temple in heaven is opened, um, all of us who've made covenant with God will see him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in Revelation, Thou only art holy, O Lord, and all nations shall come to worship before thee. This is the congregation of the Most High. We are many nations, all nations, that believed and are written in the book of life. Now, do the nations that are not saved do that? No, it says the nations that are not saved, they have fire and brimstone. Now, where is that fire and brimstone? Got to read the scriptures to know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, the lake of fire, it's, um, it's, it's trouble. It's trouble. Um, but for us, we have peace with God through the Prince of Peace, through the mediator of a better covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have peace with God through Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And we're seeking God's counsel, not man's counsel, as Isaiah 9, 6 says. He's the wonderful counselor, you know, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. It, was, it says at the very beginning of that, that a son shall be given, all right, and his name shall be called. So this is Jesus. Now, many people who claim to be gods in the earth claim to be Christ. Okay, now we're Christed with the anointing of Christ by the Spirit, but doesn't make us Christ. We're one with him. We, it's as if, if, if when God sees us, he sees the Son. Yes, that's true. But he's the everlasting one that is our king and priest uh, after the order of Melchizedek. He's an everlasting king in the kingdom, in the kingdom in paradise, where Jesus said that he was taking the man next to him when he was dying on the tree on the cross. So here, as ambassadors, we're living stones, and we have a living word. Okay, the word is alive in us he's given us our understanding we give him all the praise honor and glory in the people that are not born again with sincerity and genuine faith they have a dead letter all right they need to have a living word with them beloved and that is where this is very important where we need to help to have christ be across the whole sea of people hallelujah giving shining our light here and as we're here you know it says that the the vessels are like cups jesus said drink of my cup and you will have everlasting life what is god out of his throne flows rivers of living waters we are living waters we're a cloud with water epistle of jude says there are some that have no water in them they're they're um they're clouds without water plucked up by the root twice dead all right, not good to be twice dead unless you're dead with Christ. And then whenever you, your second death won't hurt you. So it's really just the dissolving of your tabernacle. Like, like Elijah went up in a fiery chariot, his, his tabernacle, the old man was, was dissolved. <laughs> Trust in the Lord, walk in his truth, beloved. So, um, back to what we were going to talk about in this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's read some scripture here. Hallelujah. Um, okay, we're going to go to the very end here. This is what God's given me without, within the hour. All glory to him. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. He's thoroughly purging his floor with fire. The word of God is. And God said the spirit of truth would come and make restitution at the end. The father would come and burn up the wicked husbandmen and set up new husbandmen. Read the parable of the, the husbandman, the wicked husbandman. Um, and because Jesus will be heir of the kingdom, he will get his fruit. We are a fruit from the dead. We are his uh, fruit. And his fruit is good because 
We were dead, dead in our sins and trespasses, and now we are made alive in him. This is a basket of good fruit because we are new creatures in Christ. And that's how he ingathers us is by um, through him into the Ark of the Covenant, the blood covenant, that the, the new covenant that's in his blood. Hallelujah. And in the old man, God is thoroughly purging his floor. He says he did not come to bring peace, but a sword, fire. He will be, and that's the lamp. The Psalm 119, 105. So, love perfected. Let's read love perfected. It's real important so that you know that the fire is his righteous recompense of reward to those who are not standing in the judgment. Okay, for us, we've made covenant with God. And in First Corinth or First John 4, we, oops, just ripped it, sorry. <laughs> we read, well, firstly, let's read Hebrews 6 9 Hebrews 6 9 hallelujah give him glory 6 9 and it says beloved brethren or 19 19 sorry 6 19 which hope okay let's go a little bit before that we're in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel we talked about Isaiah 9 6 confirmed it by an oath hallelujah he made an oath with Abraham Abraham was saved by faith this is a faith covenant that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie he cannot lie he's not like man that he would lie it says in the scriptures we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us Christ in us the hope of glory which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast fast and which entereth into that within the veil we talked about the veil his flesh the blood and the water that he he laid down in the grave and he resurrected the bone flesh and bone a quickening spirit this is not this is a heavenly body beloved it's not of the natural man there's nothing of the flesh blood and water the water is in us we are a sea of people mankind flesh blood water there's a there's a testimony in earth the blood cried out abel's blood cried out to god when cain slew him and cain was of that wicked one and he was a murderer like his father the wicked one who was a murderer from the beginning abode not in the truth truth is life he is life he is not death he holds the keys of death and hell jesus took the keys of death and hell he owns the gates of his enemies but he possesses them he possesses them. He can force his way into any man. <laughs> this is something that they do not want to watch. Yeah, yeah. Their their whole kingdom can burn up in one moment. You know, God will pour out his flesh on, his spirit on all flesh. His, his spirit on all flesh. And if you're not a spirit, what happens? Not good, not good. So whither the forerunner is for us entered even jesus made an high priest forever after the order of melchizedek for this melchizedek king of salem priest of the most high god this is everlasting according to the scriptures in revelation who met abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him so we were talking about the slaughter of the kings we're slaughtering kings right now and priests well the lord is with his word all the kings of the earth, all of them, Babylon is burning, Revelation says. And those kings who did sorcery and deceived the nations have become like serpents, like their father, the devil, murderers, it says in the scriptures. So who's destroying them? Well, the king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek, after the order of Melchizedek, king and priest, who is everlasting. And, and God blessed him and he blessed us with peace blessing and all sorts of things now within the world we don't have peace he says you're gonna have trouble but he says in me you have peace and the scriptures are comfort beloved this is going to comfort you today hallelujah to whom also abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of salem which is king of peace so king of righteousness jesus jesus is the righteous branch he is our righteousness, as Ephesians 6 says, our breastplate. Because we put on the armor of God. We don't trust in our flesh. We don't trust in our own words, which is the water. And we don't trust in our blood testimony, which is against us. Okay? 
Because what does it say? It's a testimony of sin, death. But what is God's testimony? Because they use the law and say, okay, you're a sinner. And they accuse us. Who is they? We're going to get into that in just a minute. Um, in another video. Because we'll, we'll, we'll tackle that. And we'll, 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 we'll trample it down under our feet. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Trample that serpent tongue under our feet, beloved. So Jesus, King of righteousness, King of peace, we have peace with God the Father. In the world we have no peace, but with Father we have peace. Through Jesus, hallelujah. Without Father, without Mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Wait a minute, without Father? This is where we were talking about at the beginning. I think God's trying to give everyone the understanding that God is one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Even though he has a father as the son who died for our sins, but the apostle said we know him no more after the flesh. Very important. Read 1 Corinthians 15, the whole chapter, and you'll get understanding on this. Because, why? Remember the video I did where this young man from the Greek fraternity came up to me and said that he was a demigod? A demigod, and he worships um, Zeus, which is a lightning bolt. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning. And they are goats. They claim to be goats. What are goats? They are greatest of all time. Well, goats are on the right hand of God, and God sends the men into damnation, it says. The sheep, we follow Jesus wherever he goes. Goats try to climb up mountains. And certainly, they'll be on a mountain high, remember? We battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But God brings them down. All things that exalt itself above God and all that's worship is brought low. So a demigod is a half man, half God. Meaning they're living out of the flesh. The blood, the water, and uh, the flesh. The old man. With us, the old man is dead. There's no life to sin. Sin is dead. Crucified with Christ. Dead. That old man is gone, buried. The new man, which is created in righteousness, is of Jesus' flesh and bone. Because we, we are in the resurrected Christ and we have our life hid in him. We are living stones. So, walls of praise gates of praise gates open up to bring people to christ we point to jesus christ we say this is the door go through it and in eyes in uh, psalms of david he says lift up your heads o ye gates and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle the the anchor for our soul is him and um he is the king, strong and mighty in battle. And you see that in Revelation. We've talked about that. So even though we sit here as ambassadors for Christ, we are not after the rudiments of this world. We're not part of this world. Now, some people who are babes in Christ, they have not exercised their senses to know these things. They have not studied to show themselves approved. A workman that's not going to be ashamed. Some of them might find shame because someone might have the word and be able, the devil is he knows the word the serpent knows the word beloved that's why god said be wise as serpents but harmless as doves a serpent knows the scriptures but we are not a serpent because a serpent twists the scriptures we do not twist the scriptures in unrighteousness because that's an unrighteous thing that's deceit and what did god do to the serpent in the garden who deceived eve he cast him in out of the garden so Eve was deceived. That's why God judged the serpent. In the end, the same thing, the kings of the earth, the mighty men, the merchantmen, the sorcerers, the murderers, the liars and deceivers deceived all nations with their king, the Egyptian, the tongue of the Egyptian sea. What is that sea? That sea is very different than the sea of mankind. And we're going to get into that too. That sea is very different than the sea of mankind. Now mankind, mankind is being... Oh, here he comes again. <laughs> Lord rebuke it. Corrupted with sin and wickedness. Well, had been corrupted with sin and wickedness. The fire of God is here and he's burning up. And people, the, the nations will learn righteousness because the unrighteous will be burned up. Anyone who would not have Jesus to reign before over them, he says, bring me, bring before me and my feet and slay them before me. 
So Jesus is using that sword to slay and to cut through bone and marrow and discerning the hearts of men, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And those thoughts and intents of the heart could be a root of bitterness, could be words spoken from hell, giving death, could be um, the devil's snake tongue coming out of their mouth. Ugh. But they carry Bibles. But those Bibles are meant to deceive you, to make wolves in sheep's clothing. No wonder for Satan appears as an angel of light. What's an angel of light? Well, we're, we're, angels are light, and we're Christians, light in the world. Because Christ in us, the hope of glory. He is the light. He is the light of the world that's in our heart. Hallelujah. You can't see him because the kingdom comes without observation. You can't see the kingdom, but we are the part of the kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, with our faith, our faith is most holy. Holy unto God. And Jesus is the bishop of our souls. So, if he's going to redeem the souls of his body of Christ, he's going to redeem their souls there's, there's not going to be anyone that has a word to speak against us anymore. The accuser of the brethren will be cast down because we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus, eternally. He doesn't have anything in Christ. Satan has nothing in Christ. Nothing enters into that new kingdom. But they want you to think it does. They want you to think that the flesh and the new creature are combined. And that is a lie from the pits of hell. I trample that lie down, trample that serpent down under my feet. It's a lie. We are no longer of the flesh. We are no longer of the blood. We are no longer of the water. We have to renew our minds and understand this truth. Let's read 1 John 4. Hallelujah. What love perfected is. We're going to start kind of um, in the, in this, read the whole thing for yourself, beloved, but Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. I love you all so much. It's true of the Spirit. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that love sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Does it say through our flesh and blood? No. Our water? No. We don't have our own words, he says. In this time, we don't have our own words because our words that we speak outside of Christ is buried with Christ. Hearing is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Hallelujah. So go down to 16. And we have known and believed that love, the love of God hath to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in, in God and God in him. Hearing is our love made perfect. Love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, 